Um, yes, I also have to approve it. And uh, for convenience, please ask your uh, questions at the end of the lecture. Many thanks for your understandings. And so we will start. Um, yes, what, what is this actually good for you? Uh, so a consistency in file naming and folder organization. I think at least some benefits are in um, identifying uh, part of the content of your files without opening them. So it's less time, right? And with this, you can also filter and locate files within a, a folder. And you can also identify if there are some files missing. Uh, implications are that, yes, as said, uh, files are easier findable within your file folders. And also uh, you can avoid uh, duplication of files and you simplify collaborative work because people can understand uh, your folder structure and also your file names. And of course, this all makes uh, conduction of your research, research project more efficient. Uh, some advice. So check also what are conventions on uh, regard uh, to uh, naming and uh, folder structure in your scientific discipline. So it might, might be that they, there are already elaborated conventions. And of course, then you should actually take over these and adapt it to your own uh, practices. And with this, it will also kind of be consistent, not only within your research group, but beyond, right? And this would have many, many more benefits, actually. And uh, another advice from us, from research data management, is also that uh, you should also create folders before you have even started of your research project. Since uh, you, you can already think of what kind of data you will collect and generate, and that will also be the start to deal with your uh, project. And of course, these folders can be additionals can be uh, additional folders can be added or also kind of changed the names, whatever. Um, so general advice on uh, file naming. So you should use unique files that reflect the content, and this should be com comprehensible, uh, not only for you, of course, also for others. Uh, the characters limits for file names are uh, 30 characters and less is of course better. You should use ASCII characters and avoid special characters and you should not use spaces and there's actually also no points, but there is one exception, the point just before the file extension that actually defines the file format, right? And uh, the, the names of your files should be unique also so you should uh, not distinguish them by upper and lowercase letters. You have to uh, consider that some operating systems are not case sensitive. So meaning that they will actually read uh, files the same, right? If you do that. So uh, dates, you should write like this. And if you set the date at, in front of your file, uh, you will have a chronological order in, in your folder which might be uh, very helpful, I guess. The same is uh, for versioning of files. So uh, establishing a, a sequential numbering system, you can also add the version at the beginning of the file and you should add leading zeros. So that means that if you have, for instance, a sequence of one to 10, you should have two digits. So, and you see here the example for this. And that will just make it a, a numerical order at the end. I will also provide an example uh, on this slide actually, but here you just see some good and bad examples. And we start with the bad examples. So here, the problem is the points uh, here in the file name per se. So not just before the file extension and also the uppercase is, is not good here. And uh, the second is just too many characters, but it's just interesting to see that uh, these are 42 characters, so it's not that much, it seems, but it's too much, actually. Then um, here, the space is a problem. Here um, is the, just the special character, which cannot be uh, read by all operating systems 
or it's just interpreted uh, wrongly. Then here's a good example for establishing a numerical order of your files in, within a folder. And this will be in a good example to establish a chronological order. Okay, and now, so now you reconsider all this, what I have just mentioned, and uh, you want to adapt this to, to your own files and realize, oh, we haven't done that before. So you have plenty of files and you want to rename it. And uh, the problem will be just, you cannot do it by hand. So yeah, how can I do it? So there are actually tools for automatic renaming. And I just provide here a few examples. I guess there are many more uh, out, out there, some also open source and uh, yeah, OS specific actually often. Um, so now we're coming to the file categories and file folder structure, some good practices on that. So you should really make distinctions. So distinctions between work and private material then also between own and others works. That means, for instance, your papers and literature, right? And also research uh, and administrative content should be separated. Then within the research uh, folder, you should also uh, separate processed and uh, raw data and experiment and analysis can also, analysis files can also be kind of separated of course, it is a bit up to you, but these are just some advice. And you might also think of uh, uh, creating separate folders for experimental uh, runs, uh, replicates. So, and this is just uh, an advice that you should not use more than five levels in your folder hierarchy. Sometimes this is not... Uh, uh, implementable per se, but yeah, you should try to do it like this. And you should also avoid overlapping names in your file, uh, in your folders. So for instance, here's an example. So you should not uh, name one folder data and the other presentation data that might uh, uh, get, you, you might get into trouble with this. So you should use, uh, rename this second folder and just uh, omit the data. So just call it a presentation. Then uh, another advice is that uh, files you're not longer working with, you can relocate to a steady storage location, for instance, which is, of course, also backup. And uh, last but not least, path names should also not exceed 255 characters. And yeah, this is uh, can, can be done pretty fast. Okay, here is an example of a file folder uh, structure of a PhD project, just applying the, the advice and rules uh, I mentioned before. I think I don't have time to go into all this, but the uh, slides will be uh, provided later on. Um, here, just some very important thing on README files. So often uh, people need to document uh, their are um, systematic file naming and folder organization and that you can do within a readme file. And I think it's a pretty good example. You can see here a file and folder schema. And here it's for microscopic images, but of course you can also extend it to other file types. It's just, just a start. So microscopic images, for instance, you can have here the file name schema. So it consists of a date, microscope, signal, whatever. Then you have the schema key, which uh, specifies what the content means here. And here you also see an example for it. And if necessary, and you don't want to include it in the file and folder schema above, you can also have another, let's say table, where you specify a bit more what, what is meant by, for instance, the name of the microscope, because this is also an abbreviation you see. So in this case, it would be laser scanning confocal microscope. And then the number actually means the location where in which room it is. Uh, yes, these are just some suggestions, but I think it's a good start. And it could also help within a group uh, to uh, establish a consistent system. With this, I'm actually at the end of this lecture. And I just uh, have here my references and some further reading. Thank you for your attention. And um, yeah, 
Before we actually take questions, uh, I would like to announce uh, the next coffee lecture, which is coming up, which is uh, very interesting, especially for people that really are directly involved in uploading data to the research collection. So I guess you could benefit a lot of that. So please join this lecture. And uh, I just want to also announce the survey, which will be started um, at the end. So, and we are really happy about uh, getting your feedback on, on this. Thank you very much. And now I'm happy to take uh, questions. <laughs>